Today I'm going to show you how I knit this cute springtime throw pillow. I designed this pillow using one of my Knitting Machine sketchbook pages. If you'd like to support the channel, a link below to my Etsy shop where you can purchase the PDF, or you can visit dianalevinenits.com to check out all my books and templates, including my Knitting Machine coloring book and my Knitting Machine sketchbook, both available now on Amazon. For this project, I'll be using Loops and Threads Impeccable Yarn in the colors Bright Sky Blue, Sea Foam, Sunny Day, Coral, Soft Rose, and Magenta. I'm knitting the pillow on my 48 needle Centro knitting machine, and I'll also be using a crochet hook, a darning needle, a pair of scissors, and a bag of stuffing. This throw pillow measures approximately 7 inches tall and 15 inches wide. To begin, I need to map out where each color will go and figure out how many rows per stripe. I'm a visual learner, so I designed these templates so I can see my work before I start knitting, and it also makes the math a little easier for me. You can use the templates digitally by bringing the PDF into a paint program, or you can sketch them by hand using markers or crayons. When you're designing the pillow, make sure to add at least one or two extra rows to the side stripes, because you'll lose a row in seaming, and also because once you stuff the pillow, it will make the side stripes appear slightly smaller, so you'll want to add at least one or two extra rows to compensate. I wanted a springtime color scheme since spring is finally blooming here in Boston, so I went with a range of bright happy colors. For this pattern, I'm going to be knitting 14 rows for the two end stripes and 13 rows for each of the interior stripes. We'll begin by casting on to scrap yarn. To begin, pull a long tail from the scrap yarn and throw it in the middle of the machine, wrapping your yarn around the first needle and then weaving it back and forth around the needles until the end of the row. When you see your first needle again, bring your yarn into the tensioner and choose the middle tension. Set your counter back to zero. Knit five rows in the scrap yarn. When you finish the five rows, begin following the template starting from row one. In my case, I'll be knitting row one to 14 in blue for a total of 14 rows. Cut a short tail from the scrap yarn and cut a very long tail from the main color because you'll need a long tail to seam up the side of the pillow at the end. Put the two tails together in the middle, making sure they're between the same two needles and hold them close together and low as you begin to knit the main color. Go slowly at first and you can pick up speed after the first couple of rows. I just finished my 14 rows of blue, and now I'll check my design. For stripes 15 to 27, I'll be using sea foam green for a total of 13 rows. When you switch colors on the inside of the design, you can cut a much shorter tail, 5 or 6 inches is plenty. I'll continue following the same pattern, 13 rows for each interior stripe, until I reach my last row in magenta. Quick disclosure, it was raining when I filmed this tutorial, and the humidity caused my machine to drop stitches, so you'll notice that I dropped a few stitches in my work. If I were selling this pillow, I would take the time to fix them or start over completely, but since this pillow was just for us, I wasn't too worried about it and I just stitched them up in the back at the end. For the last stripe, I'll be using magenta, and for rows 67 to 80, I'll be knitting 14 rows. I just finished my last row of magenta for a total of 80 rows for the entire pillow. I'll switch back to a scrap yarn, making sure to cut a really long tail in the magenta to use for seaming up the side later. Knit five rows in the scrap yarn. When you finish the five rows, cut a short tail and crank the machine a few more rows and the work will fall off the needles. Sometimes the work gets stuck on the last couple of needles and if that happens, just pull them off manually. Pull your work out of the machine and stretch it out. Next, turn it inside out and secure all the color change tails with a knot and trim the tails. You want to tie the knots tight enough that it brings the stitches together in the outside, but not so tight that it bunches up the work. You can check how it's looking by flipping back and forth from the inside to the outside. Next, seam up one side of the tube. For now, you'll only be seaming up one side, not both. First, locate the two yarn tails and keep them on the left side. Then, flatten the tube and use a crochet hook to go under the loop that's furthest right. Then pull under the next loop on the top side, and then the next loop on the bottom side. Again, pull under a loop from the top, and then a loop from the bottom. Continue crocheting the seam closed until the end of the row, and when you're at the last stitch, pull the yarn tail through the last stitch and secure it with a knot, and remove the scrap yarn. Now set aside the work, leaving one end of the tube unseamed. Next, we'll knit the interior of the pillow. Choose a color that will blend nicely with the exterior colors in case you can see it showing through after we assemble the pillow. I'm going with a beige. Follow the exact same process as we did earlier, casting onto five rows of scrap yarn, then cutting a long tail to switch to the main color. However, in this part, you don't need to switch colors or follow a design. Just knit 78 rows in the main color and then switch back to five rows of scrap yarn, leaving a long tail at the end of the main color and then cut a short tail in the scrap yarn and crank the machine until the work falls off the needles. Pull the work off the machine, stretch it out, and then seam up one side of the tube in the same way we seamed the exterior pillow earlier. Then remove the scrap yarn. You'll now have two tubes, each with one seamed side and one open side. Insert the interior tube into the exterior tube, using your finger to push the corner of the interior into the corner of the exterior. 
Then use stuffing to fill the pillow, making sure to stuff it evenly. You want a medium amount of stuffing, not too much and not too little. Once your pillow is filled with stuffing, seam the interior tube in the same way we did it previously. When you're a few stitches away from the end, check to see if you want to add in any additional stuffing, and then finish the seam and remove the scrap yarn. Then seam the outer layer and remove the scrap yarn. Our throw pillow is almost complete. Secure the remaining yarn tails with a knot and weave in the ends. Next, I always like to add a knitting tag to my work, so I'm going to sew my tag on. I'll link below to the shop where I order my tags. Our throw pillow is complete. If you make this project, please share your work with me on Instagram, at Diana Levine Knits. And if you'd like to purchase the throw pillow PDF or any of my knitting machine template books, please visit the links below or head to dianalevinenits.com. And if you found this video helpful, please give it a like, comment below, and subscribe to the channel for lots more fun, quick and easy knitting patterns and tutorials.